In this section, we're going to have a look at synthesizing different types of signals. Then, after we know how to create the signals, we can use them as part of digital instruments to create sound, or we can use them as test signals to analyze different types of processors that we'll look at in other sections. First up here, what I'm going to do is open up a digital audio workstation and create these signals in an environment you're familiar working in. Then we'll switch over to MATLAB and other videos so I can show you how to write the computer code to synthesize these signals yourself. We're going to have a look at the sine wave, the square wave, sawtooth wave, triangle wave, an impulse train, and white noise. So let me go ahead and pull up Pro Tools so we can get started. Here's my digital audio workstation. Let me take you through my setup. I've got two tracks going. The one on the top is called Synthesis. Here, I'm going to be creating different kinds of signals. I'll be using a plugin called the Signal Generator. From here, I can create different kinds of signals and also change some of the characteristics, like the frequency and level, or amplitude. Then, I'm going to be sending the output of this plugin into another plugin. This is a spectrum analyzer. It will tell me the frequency content of the signal that's passing through. So right now, I synthesized a sine wave at 1000 Hz. Over here, a single spike shows up, or a single frequency, at 1K. This is what it sounds like. And I can do things like change the frequency, about 500 Hz. And 2000 Hz. Now for visualization purposes, what I'm going to do is print the signal from this track onto an audio track as an audio file. This way we can visualize the waveform. So here, I'm going to switch this over to 100 Hz and then bust the signal from this track over to my audio track. Now, if I zoom in, I can see that I've synthesized a sine wave. Next, what I can do then is change the type of signal. Started out as a sine wave. Why don't I change this over to a square wave? Now, instead of having a single frequency, I actually have multiple harmonics. With a square wave, I'm going to have odd harmonics, so they show up at the odd multiples of 100, 100, 300, 500, 700, and so on. Let me go ahead and print this signal. Now let's visualize what this one looks like in the waveform. So you can see that the amplitude oscillates between two possible frequencies, a positive one and a negative one. Next up, let's look at the sawtooth signal. I'll go ahead and print this one. Here, the signal is ramping on during each cycle. The amplitude increases until the start of a new cycle then it repeats over again. Another thing to notice is that spectrally, we have harmonics that happen at both even and odd frequencies. We have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz, all the way up. Next up, let's look at the triangle wave. Here, we just have odd harmonics again. One thing you can notice is that the amplitude rolls off much more quickly for the triangle wave than it does for the square wave. Amplitude does not decrease as fast here as it does for the triangle wave. Let's have a look at this one when I print out the waveform. Here, the amplitude increases for half the cycle and decreases for the other half of the cycle. That takes care of all the periodic kinds of signals that we can create using the signal generator. The sine wave, the square wave, 
sawtooth wave, and then the triangle wave. The next two kinds of signals that I'll show you are both aperiodic signals. So different types of noise. First up is white noise and then pink noise. Here, I'll click on white noise. And we can see what it looks like. This signal is random by its very nature. We're seeing here that the amplitude, if I were to keep track of it over time, is going to even out so that it's equal amplitude across all frequencies. We look at the waveform, you'll notice that it does not repeat. The same part of the signal never cycles over and over and over again. So I'll print this one. We can see it looks like just random amplitude values over and over and over again. A similar kind of signal is the pink noise. Pink noise is somewhat similar to white noise, except that the amplitude characteristics over frequency are different. With pink noise, the amplitude is going to roll off. With white noise, we had equal possible amplitude across all frequencies. Here with pink noise, the idea is that we're going to have equal energy per octave. We'll get into more of some of this stuff in other videos too. But pink noise is going to have more energy in the low frequencies, less energy in the high frequencies because of that. I'll go ahead and print this one. So again, we're just left with random signals that are being generated. So that takes care of working inside of Pro Tools to synthesize different kinds of signals. This was just an example though. In the next series of videos, what we're going to do is actually write the computer code to synthesize these different kinds of signals.